And we're back with another episode of Levin Yank's Breakdown. Welcome back, guys. I'm Pete Douthit. Today, we are going to be breaking down in depth the latest USMNT roster for the El Salvador game on December 9th. Now, before we get into this roster, we have to be honest about the fact that there are still a lot of players that could have been in camp who are missing. Because all of these clubs are still involved in the CONCACAF Champions League and their players weren't called up. And all of these clubs were still involved in the MLS playoffs and all of their players weren't called up. So, we won't be able to read a whole lot into this, but we will try. And there are three specific talking points that I want us to look at because I think they're important for this roster. Before we get into it though, I want to give Greg Berhalter massive, massive kudos for bringing Efrain Alvarez into camp. Say what you want about Greg Berhalter, and I have said a lot, but he has been very, very good with recruitment and bringing a young L3 player, Efrain Alvarez, who used to be with the US, when he was in his U15s and got turned off by some youth coaches or whatever happened with the program. I'm not exactly aware of the full details, but now he's coming back into camp. To be clear, he won't be able to play in this game, I don't think, because he hasn't filed his one-time switch as of right now. But bringing him into camp, seeing what he could be a part of, having him interact with the other players and with Greg could be something that maybe just puts some doubt in his mind about representing L3 and saying, maybe I want to join the USMNT again. This is a vibrant program that's growing, that has a very bright future. I hope Efrain Alvarez has a very positive experience in camp and ends up joining the USMNT. Okay, before we get into it, guys, if you're new to this channel, welcome. Smash that subscribe button. We've got new videos every week. If you're already subscribed, smash that like button. It helps other people to find us. Here we go. Okay, so there's three talking points that I want us to look at with this roster. Number one, has Greg Berhalter moved on from Michael Bradley and Josie Altidore? It's a fair question because neither of them was in the January camp. And you would think with not only the European players being unavailable, but so many of the domestic players being unavailable due to club commitments, there would be room for Michael Bradley and Josie Altidore. But there wasn't. Does that mean that Greg Berhalter is finished with them? I don't know. Personally, I hope so. Look. Both of those guys were amazing servants for the US for many, many years, and they did many great things. Unfortunately, they're past it now. Michael Bradley is a liability even in MLS. People say, oh yeah, but his passing range is still good. His passing range is good when he has time and space. You put any kind of pressure on Bradley and he folds. He can't protect the back line. He's slow, he's aging. Guys, it happens to all great players. You can't keep holding on to guys when they're no longer good enough. We tried doing that in 2017, and look what happened in Trinidad and Tobago. Okay, Michael Bradley for me should no longer be involved with the program. Josie Altidore. Now, a lot of people think that Josie should still be involved with the program. I hear phrases like, when he's fully fit, he's still the best striker we have. Stop. Josie Altidore has not been fully fit for more than three years. And when he's not injured, he looks slow, he looks heavy, he looks disinterested. What is it, one goal all year in MLS? Come on. Josh Sargent, Nicholas Giawakini, Sebastian Soto, Daryl DK, Io Akinola. These are the guys of the future. Some people say, well, he could be a good mentor in camp. Guys, I'm all for having experienced guys in camp who can be good mentors if they also bring quality. You don't waste a roster spot on a guy who's not really gonna bring the quality that you want to the team just because he can mentor guys. That's what you have coaches for. And there are plenty of guys in the national team who have experience, who can be mentors. You don't need to bring someone like Josie Altador to mentor anybody if he's not gonna provide you the quality and talent that you need on the field. So yeah, I don't know if they're gone for sure. I hope they are. I hope this is Greg Berhalter realizing that we're building something for the future here and we need to get those guys experience. We need to get them playing together. We need to get them used to each other, used to the system so we can move forward into this new era. Number two, are we finished with the Regista Six? For all of 2019, Berhalter insisted on having one of those deep lying playmakers playing in the six. It was either Michael Bradley, Jackson Yule, or Will Trapp. We did not start a game in 2019 without one of those three players on the field. Berhalter even tried to move Tyler Adams to right back in order to accommodate this idea. And it was very much based on one of his tactical principles of the long switch, where you would overload one side of the field, send the ball back to your deep lying playmaker, Regista number six, have an overlapping fullback on the other side, make a run, 
hit them with a long diagonal, have them send it into the box and create a scoring chance that way. I've talked about this before, guys. That's an easy tactic to defend against. I don't mind playing with a Regista, but the reality is that most deep lying playmakers aren't that good defensively. And a huge job of the number six is to protect the back line. So oftentimes, if you're playing with a Regista, you have to have a midfielder be more defensively minded to help protect the back line because you're not getting that job out of your deep lying playmaker. Now, I understand Michael Bradley and Will Trapp not being there. That's great. But no Jackson Ewell on this roster when he was available was surprising to me. Jackson Ewell is somebody that Burhalter trusts and has used a lot. Even as recently as the January camp, he had Jackson Ewell there. Now, in November, we saw a very athletic midfield, right? We had Tyler Adams, Yunus Musa, and Weston McKinney, and more of an idea to press the ball high. So if you're gonna play that way, you want a more athletic midfield, and the Regista six deep line playmaker doesn't really fit in. Number three, this is basically an Olympic squad. 16 of the 22 players are Olympic eligible. So clearly what Greg Berhalter is trying to do is figure out this. In November, we saw a lot of the first team. These are the guys who are probably gonna be involved in Nations League and World Cup qualifying, with maybe a couple of exceptions who will join the U23s. But this roster is vast majority under 23 players, and I think that's to help see who can be involved with the Olympics, who can be involved with the U20 team, and maybe a few of these guys get shunted out to the Gold Cup. Hey guys, just a quick interruption here to let you know some exciting news from me. 11 Yanks is now on Patreon. That's right. If you like the content that we have every week on YouTube, I'm going to be posting more on Patreon, videos, audios, articles. Not only that, we're also going to have a USMNT community on Patreon with polls and discussion and everybody chipping in with what they think and their thoughts. Right now, we only have one tier. It's just $3 a month, but I'm excited to create a USMNT community on Patreon. If you like what we're doing here at 11 Yanks, if you like the weekly videos and you want more USMNT content and you want to support what we're doing, check out the link below. It's in the description. All right, back to the video. So starting with goalkeepers, we have Bill Hamid, David Ochoa, and CJ Dos Santos. A lot of goalkeepers were not available, so this is basically what we're left with, but I'm very happy to see Ochoa and Dos Santos, who by the way is the only European-based player on this roster involved. I've said what I think before about Bill Hamid. I think he's an inconsistent goalkeeper. Uh, but I get him being on this roster. David Ochoa has a very high ceiling, played in the U20 World Cup last year, was very good not only as a shot stopper, but also very good with his feet, so fits in a Burhalter system, had interest from Manchester United before he signed with Real Salt Lake, has played for the Real Monarchs, the USL team in Salt Lake for the last two years, and just made his MLS debut at the age of 19 in the last game of the season. CJ Dos Santos has been playing for Befica's under 23, and this year graduated to Befica's B team. I haven't seen a lot of him play, so it's hard for me to comment, but I'm excited to see a young goalkeeper playing in Europe in the pool, in this roster. Fullbacks! Sam Vines and Julian Araujo. I'm very excited to see both of those guys. I hope they both start. Kyle Duncan has been decent with the Red Bulls this past year. I maybe would have preferred to see somebody else. I talked about Jalen Lindsay. A lot of you guys like Brian Reynolds. I wouldn't have minded seeing him either. Marco Farfan is somebody I don't really understand. He's 22 years old, still hasn't locked down a starting spot for the Portland Timbers. I do think we have to go back to, if you're gonna be called up for the men's national team, you either have to have one of two things, either performance or potential. So either you've earned it through performances week in and week out with your club, or you have such a high ceiling, so much potential that we call you in even maybe before you're 100% ready to contribute on a meaningful level because we want to get you involved with the system. We want to get you in early. George Bello and Chase Gasper are with their clubs, but we still could have called up Jonathan Gomez. I mean, Jonathan Gomez is playing in USL, but he's 18 years old. He's going to be involved with the U20s. He's got a very high ceiling. I wish he would have been here as Sam Vine's backup instead of Marco Farfan, but it's not the end of the world. Julian Araujo has been courted by Mexico, so I'm really happy to see him here. I want him to start this game. I think he has a very high upside, bags of potential, both sides of the ball, defensively and offensively. I think we need to get him locked into this USMNT roster and involved as soon as possible. Center backs, happy to see Mark McKenzie there, one of the best young center backs in the USMNT. Aaron Long deserves another shot to say I should be the partner for John Brooks. He didn't have the best first part of the season with the Red Bulls, but then cleaned up his act and has been fine over the past couple of weeks. I'd like Mark McKenzie to replace Tim Ream as John Brooks' backup because he can play with his left, but he is technically right-footed. So he could also be John Brooks' partner if he shows well. He did play against Costa Rica back in January and he's improved ever since. There's rumors about Celtic coming in for him. 
Walker Zimmerman. I've said what I think about Walker. I don't think he's USMNT material, but we don't have a lot of other options, so I get why he's in this roster. Mauricio Pineda is a very interesting player. Spent four years in the college. I think that hampered his development a little bit, but like I said, we don't have a lot of options. He is Olympic eligible. He's a very technical, smooth, ball-playing center back. Spent a lot of his youth career as a holding midfielder, so I guess he fits the Burhalter system in a way that Walker Zimmerman and Aaron Long do not. Midfielders, very excited about Brendan Aronson and Cole Bassett. Sebastian Legette is a connector. He provides experience. He knows the system. He's done well for the U.S. Frankie Amaya is somebody I didn't think we would see, but he is a dual national, and reportedly he was being courted by Mexico. He could be with the Olympic roster. Cole Bassett, guys, everyone's talking about Brendan Aronson, but don't sleep on Cole Bassett. He's got one of the best scoring and assisting records for American midfielders in Major League Soccer this season, based on minutes played. Kellen Acosta is another guy I don't think should be anywhere near the national team, but because we didn't bring in Jackson Yule and Gianluca Busio wasn't available, Tanner Tessman wasn't available, Maybe he thought we do need a guy who can play the six and he brought in Kellen Acosta. I don't love it, but I kind of get it in a way. Some people speculated that Brendan Aronson wouldn't be here because Salzburg wouldn't want him to get injured. So I'm very glad he is involved. I hope he starts and plays the full 90. And forwards, Daryl DK and Io Akinola are both dual nationals. I think Akinola is actually a tri-national. He could play for Nigeria, Canada, and the US. DK has been a revelation in MLS this year. He reminds me a lot of a younger Josie. Paul Ariola is reliable as ever. Chris Mueller has had a breakout season with Orlando. I'm excited to see what he can do with this team. Georgi Mihailovic is another one of those guys that I don't rate very highly. I know some people are excited about him. Very basic player. He seems to be seen as a winger on this roster. Maybe there just weren't a whole lot of other options. Personally, I think there were other guys I would have rather seen than Georgi. Efrain Alvarez, guys, he's very, very good with the ball at his feet. He still has a lot to learn both defensively and with his off the ball movement. Sometimes he's a little bit lazy. Sometimes he doesn't move into the spaces he's supposed to. But what this guy can do with the ball at his feet is pure magic and I'm really excited to see him here. Even if he isn't able to play, I hope we can get him to file a one-time switch before March. But just the fact that he's in camp and willing to see what we're doing and be involved with the process is really, really good news. Time for the starting lineup guys and this is what I want to see. David Ochoa in goal. I wouldn't mind CJ DeSantos getting the second half, but I'd like to see Ochoa get the start. I think he's going to be our under-23 starter. Julian Araujo on the right, Sam Vines on the left, and Mark McKenzie and Aaron Long at center back. In the holding midfield, I want to see Maurizio Pineda. Yes, I know he's listed as a defender, but he did play most of his college career and his youth career at holding midfield. I think he'd be a very good complement to the other two midfielders I want, Cole Bassett, and Brendan Aronson. They can play those dual eights that I think Burhalter likes. Chris Mueller on the right, Paul Ariola on the left, and Daryl DK up front with Io Akinola getting minutes at some point. Of this 11, I think some of these guys will be in the Qatar 23 player roster. So this is a great chance to bring them in and make them a part of the program. A lot of dual nationals here. Let's help them feel that they're a part of the US men's national team program. All right, guys, that's it for now. More exciting news though. After the game on Wednesday, I will be going live on YouTube. I will be doing a live stream just to hang out chat with you guys, talk about the game, see what we liked, what we didn't like. It's nice sometimes right after a game to hang out and just chat about it and get each other's opinions. So 10 minutes after the game against El Salvador on Wednesday, I will go live on YouTube. Hope to see you guys there. Come hang out with me. As far as the actual video goes, we won't have a video until Thursday next week because I want to talk about the game, then I want to analyze it and go over it again and then bring my tactical breakdown on Thursday. You guys are awesome. Don't forget to check out our Patreon. Hit me up in the comments. I will respond. Have a great week, guys.